country of music that they had for me tonight. Uh, they, they do a great job of that. We know this school is uh, rapidly drawing to a close. As a matter of fact, we have a graduation coming up this week. So uh, things are closing up pretty quick. Uh, with two proms this past Saturday, all proms, all five schools have had their proms now. And uh, each one was very nice, very special. Graduation. Uh, <coughs> Like I said, it's coming up and we want to remind all graduates that after graduation, uh, project graduation is going to be taking place at Bose. It's a great event. Uh, certainly, it's well worth your time. There's going to be nice prizes given away. Everything's free. Food's free. Uh, bowling. All the other things that go on in there is going to be free. So really not a reason not to go. It's going to be a great evening. So we uh, certainly want to welcome uh, each of you here uh, this evening. First item on the agenda is invocation uh, for the board. I'm going to call on uh, Mrs. Ann Evans. Thank you. Yeah. Well, watching part of the Kentucky Derby this weekend, I heard this quote. This is my dream. This is my year. And that resonated with me and stuck with me because it reminded me of some artifacts that I was presented at Granite Falls Elementary School when the board made a visit throughout Four Bear Schools in the recent days. I had kept this and I remembered it. And I don't know if you can see it or not. The reason I kept it was because the cursive handwriting was so gorgeous. We each, each board member was presented one of these. I actually ended up with two. Uh, because there are only seven of us and the child wanted to give us one. So I gratefully kept both of mine. And I kept it because I have friends that say to me, do you teach cursive in public schools? And I said, absolutely. And I can show you some samples is what I wanted to be able to do. But after I heard that quote, I remembered the little girl that had written and handed to me. And she said, thank you for working so hard so students can dream big. I believe they were second graders. And another child in that same classroom was a little boy, and he came up and said, thank you for helping, helping make decisions to help students to be their best. This was for mine. So after receiving those, I also thought about and my heart was so touched by a young man who each of us in the board were presented that day from a coffee cart, something that we had pre-ordered. And they happened to call my name first, and the little boy presented me this, and I couldn't part with it. It had each of the children's names on it, and it says, Granite Falls Elementary School Espresso, changing the world one cup at a time. And what it says on the back of it is with, in order for these children listed to meet their IEPs, and I'm gonna get emotional, that what they do is they present these drinks and it teaches them to identify coins and their value, to give back correct change, to increase their reading comprehension, and to use their conversational turn-taking skills. Eye contact identifying social cues and using manners, building confidence in their ability to interact with you. Thank you for changing our world. Where do I get these and why do I keep these things and why is my desk so loaded with them? It's because of the realization that we have with thankfulness that so many people give so much to our students across the system. And I think about, I believe I counted 87 children in this artifact, and, and adults and people, who were throughout our system that was in the wonderful presentation that Beth Woodward has done, I think, for years. And um, one of my students, my students, was, he's an art, he's a music teacher now, Dylan Young Smith. He directed the orchestra, the orchestra, was by our students. If, 
if you did see this production, hold up your hand. It was wonderful, and I hope you can count it, catch it another year, and I hope that this will be followed. Because every, every single programs, chorus, drama, all of these things contribute so much to our public schools. And so, as our invocation tonight, I want to give praise and honor to any of the people who contribute to the work that our students are doing to make educational dreams come true. May we always be able to lift up our eyes to the hills and realize from which cometh each talent and skill that we are given. Would you join me in a moment of silence and reflect in thanksgiving for our professional educators who are teaching and training our students to make ed educational dreams come to fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Uh, next item on the agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance tonight being led by students from Gainwell Elementary School. Uh, it's uh, Najee Davenport, parents, Nigel and Kia Davenport. Uh, Riley Abernathy, parents, Stephen and Danielle Abernathy. Paisley Bean, parents, Jessica Obermeyer and Jesse Bean. And Caleb Horton. And parents are Anthony and Leah Horton. Please stand and play <coughs> your bottom right there. Okay, Thank you. Uh, earlier, uh, 
uh, we voted Bill Stone to be appointed again to the CCC and TI Board of Trustees for a four-year term. The Caldwell County Board of Education gets to appoint four people to the Board of Education, I'm sorry, to the Board of Trustees, and uh, Bill has done a great job there. He works a lot with facilities and buildings and that kind of thing, and Dr. Porch was very excited to, uh, to keep him on uh, the Board of Trustees. Uh, the next thing, many of you have probably had the opportunity to go to Gravity Games this past weekend. Uh, it's always exciting. It's a lot of fun to see those uh, cars uh, going down the hill there in the downtown Lenore and a lot of other things that are going on around uh, that particular event. It's just a great day. Uh, if you ever have a chance to see that, uh, you need to take advantage of it. Next. It's already been brought up, uh, the Wizard of Oz. We can't say enough about it. Uh, it is uh, a marvel indeed. They did such a great job with that. When you start thinking about, I think there were probably 80 or more people who were involved in the acting. Some of these were young uh, children that had uh, uh, non-speaking roles but everything meshed together and it was uh, certainly great. We had our uh, own uh, Dr. Phipps on Friday night and Dr. Todd Griffin back here. He was also in uh, Wizard of Oz on Friday night. Uh, next is Ag Expo. Uh, all seventh graders went to the fairgrounds on Friday and had a chance to see some uh, demonstrations and uh, uh, animals and that kind of thing. It was a great uh, event for all those who attended. And then on Saturday, it was open to the public. So it's, it's not the fair, but it is a great opportunity for our students to, uh, to see some of the farm equipment and to also, uh, you know, see some of the animals and a chance to pet some of them. Next is, uh, oh, I just got a note. I went on Friday night, I didn't see uh, uh, this, but uh, Mr. Bliss, Courtney Wright, y'all were also in the Wizard of Oz, so I don't wanna uh, skip that, but I was there on Friday night, it was Dr. Phipps and Dr. Griffin, but I wanna thank uh, uh, Courtney and, and Rob Bliss for being a part of that. That added uh, a good bit to the uh, play. Special Olympics was also Friday, and that was in High Brighton, and that's always a great event. You see these uh, athletes out there uh, doing what they do and doing such a great job and giving such a great effort. Very, very proud of that. And it went on from about 8.30 in the morning until probably around one o'clock or so. So a great event, Special Olympics. Uh, if you ever have a chance to stop by and see that sometime, I think it's a, uh, a rewarding experience indeed. Okay, I think that covers pretty much the uh, announcements. So we will move on to the honors and recognitions. Understanding that many of you have uh, come for this this portion of our program and we are certainly proud of uh, the students that are involved we're certainly proud of uh, the teachers and all the others that are going to be uh, uh, recognized tonight so the board's going to get up here and as you come by we want to recognize you and give you uh, uh, a tassel things go around your neck but uh, we certainly want to thank each of these people for the great job that they do and Mr. Libby Brown is going to be leading us in this portion of the agenda
Fry principal and Mr. Brad Reifart, teacher. So if you both come up before we call your students. I saw several, several of your students earlier. Gunder Sawyer, first grade. Eden Birchfield, Birchfield, fourth grade. Elizabeth McGinnis, third grade.
like to join her. And from our high school, we have Perla Gasper from West Powell High School. Dr. Richard Griffin is also here.
to take back all the certificates. <laughs>
great time. Good job. Principal, 
And Jonathan Stafford actually is the assistant director, band director at South Cobble High School. Jake Holden, is Jake here? Okay, I'm Jake. Jake Holden is a junior at South Cobble High School. He is the band vice president and will be accepting on behalf of the South Cobble High School bands. The symphonic band received a superior rating and the wind ensemble, the wind ensemble, also received a superior rate. Director Terry Reed. And uh, 
I'd like to hear these conversations at home sometime. Uh, this is subject A, 
Uh, these do not require any action. They're from your information only. You guys have a copy of those uh, items in your packet. Uh, subject B, human resources, usual and customary action items. These are contracts. Uh, at this time, I respectfully request a motion to approve uh, the uh, contracts as presented this evening. Okay, do I hear a motion that we approve human resource services, usual and customary action items as it relates to contracts? I move that we approve the contracts as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. Subject C, usual uh, human resources, usual and customary action items. These are contracts. Uh, for one, these are one-year contract uh, extensions or renewals for those individuals. Uh, respectfully request a motion to approve human resources, usual and customary action items. These are one-year contracts as presented this evening. Okay, down here a motion that we approve the uh, human resource services, usual and customary action items as it relates to contracts, and these relate to a uh, one-year contract. That being the case, do I hear a motion to that effect? Chairman Pennell, I move that we approve the contracts for the one-year renewals for 23-24 as recommended. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. Okay, thank you. Subject D, human resources, usual customary action items. These are our two-year contract. I uh, respectfully request a motion to approve human resources used on customary action items, two-year contracts as presented this evening. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the human resource services usual customary uh, action item as it relates to uh, contracts, and this is for a, a two-year period of time. I move that we approve two-year contracts as presented. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Jeremy, do I need to recuse myself from that vote? So okay. I not vote. Okay. Any opposed? Motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, subject E, human resources, usual and customary action items. These are administrative contracts. All of these contracts as presented this evening are for four year or a four year contract. Uh, respectfully request human resources usual and customary action items are administrative contracts as presented this evening. Now your motion that we approve the human resource services usual customary uh, action items as it relates to administrative contracts and those each of those would be for a four year contract. Chair Bill make a motion to approve the administrative contract four year contract. Is there a second? I second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? And motion passes. Great, thank you. Uh, subject F, uh, human resources, usual and customary lease and our personnel action items. These are our substitute list that we have this evening. We're still adding a couple subs, which is wonderful uh, to our uh, list of uh, folks that can work as substitute teacher. Respect the request a motion to approve the <coughs> usual customary personnel action items. This is our substitute list as presented this evening. Okay, do we have a motion to approve human resource usual customary uh, uh, personnel items as it relates to substitutes? As presented by Dr. Griffin. I'll move that we approve this in the two additional list as mentioned. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Great, thank you. And finally, uh, subject G, uh, these are May transfers for school year 2023-24. Uh, May board transfers for 23-24. Total transfers requested 164. Transfers recommended board approval 164 for a total board approval for the 23-24 school year 1,357. Uh, respect the request motion to approve May board transfers for 23-24 as presented. Okay, do I hear a motion that we approve the board transfers for May uh, for 2023-2024? Chairman, can I move that we approve the May board transfers as presented? All right, thank you. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 
any of those and motion passes. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Next is uh, Dr. Katrina McKellen, Assistant <coughs> Superintendent, Educational Program Services. Good evening, Chairman Pennell, Vice Chair Becker, members of the Board of Education, and Dr. Griffin. Um, this evening, I have three items for you. The first one is the 2023-2024 Caldwell County Schools Career and Technical Education Local Application. So each district in North Carolina must submit a local application for career and technical education for state and federal funding. And Caldwell County Schools is very proud of the achievements of our students and teachers, many of which we recognize tonight in our program. Um, and I'm looking forward to continue that. So the career and career technical education local plan has to be approved by the local board. So this evening I'm respectfully requesting board approval of the 2023-2024 Caldwell County Schools CTE local application. Okay, do I hear a motion that we approve the 2023-2024 CTE local application as presented by Dr. McKellen? Chairman Bill, I make a motion we approve the 2023-2024 CTE local application. Is there a second? I second the motion. All right. And any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. The second item this evening are revisions to board policies and regulations as they apply to our Caldwell Online Academy that will open for the next school year. Um, all the policies have been sitting under review for the past month. We have received no public comment, and so this evening I respectfully request approval of those policies and regulations as they have been updated to allow for Caldwell Online Academy for next school. Okay, I hear a motion that we approve the uh, revision of the board policies and regulations concerning the Caldwell online program as presented. I move that we approve the policies and regulations as presented. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. And the last item that I have um, for review this evening is Policy 1320-3560, Title I Parent and Family Engagement Policy. Um, as required by federal policies, we our Title I Parent and Family Engagement Policy has to be reviewed annually. So this is just our annual review of the policy. We are recommending no changes. And so we would like to continue with the policy as is. So just, I mean, the formal recognition from the board or formal approval from the board for us to leave the policy as is for this Okay, so Okay, do we have a motion to approve the review of board policy 1320 slash 3560 Title I Parent and Family Engagement as presented? Chairman Pell, make a motion to approve the policy as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Is this the policy we went over the work session? You said we're leaving along for second. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. McKell. Next, let me call on Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Randy Poole, Auxiliary Services. Good evening, Chairman Pamela, Vice Chair Becker, members of the board, and Dr. Green. Uh, the Child Nutrition Department presented the following information regarding uh, the community eligibility program. Uh, as discussed in the work session, the CEP would allow for free breakfast and lunch for students in Caldwell County for four years. Uh, we do have two schools that don't qualify for CEP, but we would work with those schools and make all efforts to make sure those students get qualified through other avenues. Uh, entering CEP will increase reimbursable revenue available to child nutrition, helping to offset rising costs of supplies and labors, and also help decrease the debt payment we make annually uh, for students uh, that go into debt for lunches. Uh, at this time, I'm seeking the approval from the board to enter Caldwell County Schools as a community eligibility program for child nutrition. Down here, a motion that we approve the community eligibility provision outlined by Dr. Poole, not only at our work session, but as he mentioned tonight, for Caldwell County Schools. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion that we enter into the community eligibility provision for the four-year program. 
Also, to be to be clear, just because those two schools didn't qualify, those children will qualify for free free breakfast and free lunch. And they were going to fill out the application. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to take it off our budget to make sure everybody is covered under that. Is that how I understood that, Mr. Chairman, of the work session? That was my understanding. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it got a little confusing when you were talking about it to me, so I just want to clear it. I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Price, thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate the great job you did in food services. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Chairman Phil, that starts. Next year, right? Uh, yes. Next year. David Johnson, Assistant Superintendent of Finance. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Board Members, and Dr. Red. <coughs> We've got two items tonight. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The first one is item 11A, which is the uh, request for the county commissioners to request a budget each year from the county commissioners. It's actually due by um, May 15th. I can discuss this extensively at the work session. Uh, based on a 6% salary increase and a total associated uh, matching employer cost, that request would be $654,832. This does include uh, Social Security, retirement, and hospitalization. Um, this approval, uh, if, if this is approved tonight, the superintendent and finance officer will uh, submit a formal request to the commissioners before the May 15th deadline. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to approve the local budget request of Caldwell County Commissioners as presented by uh, Assistant Superintendent uh, David Johnson? I'll move that we approve the local budget request. Is there a second? Second. Anyone have any questions? Can I make a statement? Sure. So this is just so know this is for our local employees that we are going to spend that money on if there is an increase it's coming out of our local dollars is the reason that we're asking for this extra money from the county I mean it's not just uh, That's a, a dark on it or it's, it's actual numbers of where these numbers will come in uh, we, we don't know what the budget's going to be so we don't know what that increase will be but it is for our local employees that we are currently funding any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We also have two budget amendments tonight under 11B. Um, the first one is for the state public school fund. It's in the amount of $211,448. It's additional allotments that we've received for transportation um, and summer reading camps. Uh, budget amendment number nine is for the federal grants fund. It is not an increase to the budget. It's just a transfer between purpose function codes that I'm required to present to the board as part of our resolution. Um, if these two amendments are approved tonight, we bring the total budget to Cardinal County Schools. Total budget, $157,197,531.77. Okay, down here a motion that we approve the state public school fund and the federal grant fund as presented by Mr. Johnson. I make a motion we approve the amendments named the state public school fund and number nine federal grant fund as presented. Is there a second? I second the motion. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Next, uh, I'm going to call on uh, Dr. Griffin to present on behalf of uh, Dr. Phipps uh, an administrative recommendation. Thank you, Chairman Fennell. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Don Phipps, our superintendent, uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve Leanne Fry for the position of Director of Assessment, Accountability, and Research. Uh, this would be effective July 1, 2023. Uh, Ms. Fry is currently our uh, high school director and has done a fabulous job in Caldwell County Schools for many years. So at this time, I respectfully request a motion to approve uh, Leanne Fry for the 
position of Director of Assessment, Accountability, and Research. Uh, it'll be a continuation of the current contract. Right now. Do I hear a motion that we uh, approve Leanne Fry as Director of Assessment, Accountability, and Research? And that would be continuing her current contract, and that would uh, be effective in this new position July 1st, 2023. I move that we approve Land Price, Director of Assessment Accountability and Research. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Well, uh, just, well, she made note she's already doing the job now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, she, well, she, she, she is filling in as an interim at this point, exactly. plus doing her other job. So. It is true. She is doing double duty at this point. So, uh, Come July 1, uh, hopefully things will uh, level out a little bit for you. Glad to do but that. all those in favor, say aye. Did, are we already ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. And congratulations, Leanne. You do a great job. Again.